Hello everyone and welcome to the 18th video in the TypeScript Game Engine tutorial series. In this video I am going to be adding audio to our, to our engine so that we can have a little bit of another dimension to sort of play around with when, when we're going to be creating our game. So audio can be one of those things that can go so much into detail that it can really get complicated. But in our case, we're going to keep this really simple, uh, and it's going to be just very simple files that are going to be played and uh, loaded through the browser, and we're not going to do a whole lot of effects or anything, but we're going to write it in such a way where we can extend it later on if that's what we want to do. So before I jump too much into this, I want to sort of talk about audio formats and what formats are sort of supported between um, the different browsers. So the underlying technology that we're going to be using is HTML5 audio. And HTML5 audio is something that was only added to browsers uh, a few years ago. And as such, it's something that is not uh, supported consistently, or at least in a consistent way, across browsers. Now, in the last couple of years, it's gotten a lot better but there are a lot of things that still don't um, still might throw you off if you're not aware of them. So what I have here is the uh, supported audio encoding formats for HTML5 audio. And as you can see there's a lot of different formats available here and I'm not really going to go into uh, a lot of the differences between some of these format options but um, this gives sort of a quick view of what is available in what browser and uh, should provide some insight into um, what some of the issues are that can exist when dealing with different browsers across different audio, um, across different operating systems. So, the one that most Windows users might be familiar with is the WAV file. And WAV files are pretty widely supported. Unfortunately, Internet Exploder does not uh, support them. Um, which isn't a huge deal. I don't typically support IE for my games that much anymore myself, uh, but it is worth considering. Now, something that does have um, a lot of multi-platform support is MP3. Uh, you can see here that this is across the board is, is supported, uh, with the exception of Firefox, which requires the OS to provide the implementation for that due to licensing. Um, and that's mostly on... Um, Linux environments that, that 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 can be an issue if there's no um, driver to be able to support that uh, that can be an issue but other than that um, there's really no issues with it and anybody that that I've worked with typically has those uh, necessary libraries installed on their operating system by default anyways so it's not really a huge concern um, there are some other uh, different formats here all of them have different levels of, of, uh, of loss and their compression formats and whatnot, but I don't really want to get into all that here. Um, the one I'm going to be choosing for this is MP3. So MP3 is, uh, we're, we're not going to use any different fallback formats or anything like that. I just want to use, uh, just going to use MP3. Okay, so uh, in our assets folder, we actually need a new folder now for sounds and in here I'm just going to paste uh, a flap mp3 sound and this is just a, found, a sound I found forever ago um, on the internet and uh, it's, it was just a, a sample I picked up from somewhere I can't remember where it was at this point uh, if anybody happens to know feel free to let to let me know but okay so this file is just very short um, it's it's too basically describe the the flapping of the of the duck's wings right so it's less than a second long okay so uh, that's the one I'm going to use uh, so sounds flap mp3 great so in core what we want to do is we want to add new folder and we're going to call this audio and in here we want to add new TypeScript file and we're going to call this uh, let's call this audio manager. OK. 
Okay, namespace TSE export class audio manager. Okay, and so the way that audio works is the audio API itself in the browser is responsible for loading the asset. So I'm not actually going to load the asset uh, the typical way that we load other assets through our asset manager, at least not right now. Um, instead, I'm actually just going to rely on the the audio API to do that for me. So what I want to say is public static because again this is going to be a static manager that's accessible anywhere. Uh, we want to load sound file. Okay and we want to put uh, asset path which is a string and we're going to return type void. Okay and in the audio manager uh, we want to actually have a collection of sounds that we want to play but to describe those sounds we actually need a another class to sort of hold some data for us so I'm going to export another class and this is going to be called uh, let's go ahead and call this class sound effect. Okay. Alright, and uh, it's going to hold a couple of uh, properties. So it's going to hold a property called asset path, which is a string. Um, it's going to define a play method turn type void. It's going to define a pause method which is also type void turn and stop method which is also return type void. Um, it's also going to provide a, a destroy method turn type void. Okay, so in the constructor, which we also need to create, um, we need to say new audio, which returns a HTML audio element. Um, so we actually need to pass in the asset path as a string. And we can just pass that to the audio. In the sound effect, we need to say private. Um, let's call this player. HTML audio element. So we'll say this dot player equals new audio. All right. Uh, we're also going to need another property. Um, Actually, it's not going to be a property, it's going to be a getter. So let's do public get um, yeah, we'll call this loop. That's boolean. And we'll say this.player loop going to return that. And, well, can't spell. Return. There we go. Um, I'm also going to create a setter for that. Right. And now we can say this that player loop equals value. So this is basically just a wrapper for 
this internal player that we have. Okay, so in here, let's say loop, um, which is of type boolean, and then I can just say this dot player loop equals loop. Okay. Um, next thing, uh, our destroy, we want to say this dot player equals undefined, just to sort of clean that up. Play is going to be this dot player dot play. Uh, pause is going to be this dot player pause and stop um, is going to be this dot player. Now, if I go to say stop, there is no stop. So since there's no stop, we have to say player dot current time equals zero, which essentially rewinds it, right? Because a stop, whenever you're using a media player, a stop technically also resets the time to beginning. So we just need to move the time to the beginning, um, but we need to do that after we say this dot player dot pause. Okay, so stop is just sort of a, a combination of those two things. So now we have this sound effect. So our um, in our audio manager we're going to have a private um, sound effects and it's going to be a dictionary and it's going to have a name type string and it's going to hold a sound effect and let's just set, the, set that to an empty object okay so uh, we'll say load sound file and we want to give it a name as well as an asset path so we can say audio manager dot sound effects ah That's why I didn't make it static. That should be static. Okay. So audio manager dot sound effects, and then we're going to say name uh, as the key equals uh, new sound effect, and the asset path is going to be passed in. And we don't have loops, so we need to actually say loop boolean there. So that way we can pass that there. Okay. So now we have a way to load our sound file. Okay. Next thing we need is a public static play sound. And it's going to take a string. And return type void. And what this is going to do is it's going to say if this sound effects name is not equal to undefined, this sound effect name dot play. Okay. And that's all there is to that. Um, Actually, let's go ahead and add a stop just in case. Stop sound. We'll say name string void. And I'm actually going to do the same thing except call stop. And you know what? Let's go ahead and do the same thing for pause. Okay, and I'm actually going to do another one, but we're going to call this one pause all, get rid of the parameter, and I'm going to say for let i equals zero. I is less than actually how do I want to do this? Let me actually say 
let SFX of audio manager sound effects. I don't think that's going to work. I'm going to just say in. Right. And then I can say audio manager sound effects SFX. Right, because that's a string. Okay, right. Uh, and then I can say dot pause. And get rid of this block of code. And I'm going to do the same thing, except I'm going to have a stop all. It's going to do the same thing, except stop. And that should be all that there is to our audio manager. So, an engine, right after we load the materials, I'm going to say audio manager dot load sound file. We're going to call this flap, and it's going to be assets sounds flap.mp3. I think that's what we called it. flap.mp3. Yeah, assets sounds flap.mp3. And loop is going to be false because we don't want to loop that. Okay. And so now, just to test to see if this works, in our keyboard keyboard movement behavior, Um, we're going to add one more thing. You know what? I'm actually just going to add... I'm going to add this to the mouse up event. So before, um, where we're changing the document title to the... Um, and during the mouse up event, I'm actually just going to say audio manager dot play sound and I'm going to say flap. So whenever we have a mouse up, we're going to hear the flapping sound. So let's build this and run. And now when I click, I get the the sound. Now, one thing you might notice is like I can click really fast and it's only playing it every so often. So that's actually something we need to fix. So the way we fix that is the sound effect in play. So what we need to do is we need to say if this.player uh, paused and we want to not that. So we want to say if this stop player is not paused, then we want to say this dot stop and then play. And the reason for that is if it happens to be halfway through the file, another play command won't actually do anything until the audio has been stopped. So the way that we get around that is we say if it's not paused, that means it's playing, then stop it and then play it again and that should allow us to play it as quickly as we want. Like that. Perfect. So um, that's really all there is to the audio engine. Uh, it's very straightforward, it's very simple. It gives us a very quick and easy way to sort of add um, different types of audio to our, our game when we get ready to create it. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned. And I will see you guys in the next video.